Okay, so hopefully um, you made some notes about the fact that Tucker gets called names um, and that that really bothers him, but that he can't stand up for himself um, because he's so much smaller than everybody else. Um, and so he kind of just deals with it, brushes it off, ignores it, that kind of thing. Um, and then also hopefully you paid attention to um, this section in the text right here. I'm going to reread that. It says, one day Tucker did something that made everybody stop calling him names he didn't like. I think it helped him grow a few inches too. That right there um, clues us into the fact that something is coming. So that I think is the text that you should make note of um, for that second part of number two. Okay, shall we continue? If we look at the next um, prompt, we're going to be looking at lines 78 through 116. Um, and as we do so, here are the three things that we're going to be paying attention to. It asks us to circle text that creates suspense about a major event in the plot that will take place. So what that's asking is what um, gives us that feeling that something is going to happen. Um, when we notice that in the text, we're going to circle it. The second bullet down says, underline text that suggests that his meeting with Richard was important to Tucker. Okay, um, so Richard is a character we haven't met yet, but we're going to be introduced to him soon. Um, and there are some moments that let us know that Tucker is really interested um, or really like enthusiastic about his conversation with, with Richard. So when we notice that, we're going to underline it. And then the last bullet says, in the margin, make an inference about Tucker's attitude toward Richard. Um, we're going to come back to that last bullet after I've read um, 78 through 116. Um, but just remember that an inference is an educated guess. It is reading between the lines, looking for deeper meaning. So we take the text evidence, we combine it with our own thoughts, and we come to a logical conclusion. So we're going to try and do that when we think about Tucker's attitude toward Richard, how he feels toward this man. Okay. Anyway, what happened to change all the name calling started when Tucker was on his pier trying to catch a flounder. He noticed a man standing on the Moton Motel dock just a few yards from him. The man had a thick white mustache and Van Dyke beard and wore a blue and gold military style jacket and cap. I wasn't there, so I didn't see him, but that's what Tucker told me. When the man waved, Tucker, being a friendly kind of kid, waved back. They struck up a conversation. The man said his name was Richard and that he was staying at the motel for a few days. His home was in Monteo, on Roanoke Island, not far from the Outer Banks, where he worked with the U.S. Life Saving Service. Tucker figured what he meant was that he was with the U.S. Coast Guard. Tucker was pretty knowledgeable about the Coast Guard, but he had never heard of this Life Saving Service. Tucker asked the man if he liked to fish. Richard said yes. He had been a commercial fisherman before he became a captain in the Life Saving Service. As a lifesaver, he said, he and his men went into the ocean in the middle of hurricanes or nor'easters, which down at the bottom, it tells us that a nor'easter is a storm with winds blowing from the northeast. Um, they went into the ocean in the middle of hurricanes and nor'easters to save passengers and crew members whose ships were sinking. Of course, Anything about water fascinated Tucker, so he must have asked this Richard a million questions. Richard didn't seem to mind, though. He said he didn't get to talk to kids much anymore. Richard said a good crewman had to be strong, an excellent swimmer, a quick thinker, and in good physical health, have good eyesight, and understand how dangerous the sea can be. He told so many stories about life-saving that Tucker wished he could enlist right away and said so. He had the right qualifications, and over on the side, I've made note that in this context, qualifications means um, requirements, things that make you suitable for a certain job. 
Um, he had the right qualifications, other than being too young, of course, and too short. Richard told him it wasn't the size of a person that got the job done. Uh, it was how bad the person wanted to do it. How were those huge ships, two and more stories high, able to move into the Moorhead City port and back out to sea? Most couldn't do it without little tugboats pushing and pulling them in, Richard said. A tugboat could bring in a ship many times its size. Richard said that Tucker would make a good tugboat and one day might even grow to be a big ship. He thanked Tucker for the conversation and said maybe they'd meet again. And then the man wandered off uh, back toward the motel, Tucker said. For the rest of the afternoon, he thought over what Richard had said. Okay, we're going to pause there because I believe that is line 116. Yes, yeah. okay. Um, so hopefully uh, you made some, some notes or some, you underlined some things and circled some things. You obviously could see what I underlined and circled. Now let's talk about um, this last one again. Making in, an inference or an educated guess about Tucker's attitude toward Richard. Um, so there were some things that help us understand how he feels towards Richard, um, particularly in this part right here. The fact that he um, is asking him a bunch of questions or a million questions, it says. The fact that he got so excited about what Richard was talking about. He wanted to enlist right then and there. Um, and the fact that they continue to have this conversation. All of that is text evidence that we can use to base our inference on. So um, think about that and then pause this video and in the margins right over here, um, make, make a note what you think um, or how you think Richard feels um, about Richard. I'm sorry, how you think Tucker feels about Richard. Go ahead. Okay, um, and then before we go on to the next section, it asks us to reread lines 100 through 116. Um, and let's look at this question here. It says, explain the significance of Richard's statement that Tucker would make a good tugboat and one day might even grow to be a big ship. Cite specific text evidence to support your explanation. So here it's asking um, to analyze this quote. So in lines um, 100 through 116, I actually circled um, this here. This is specifically what it's asking us about. He compares him. He's, Richard compares Tucker to a tugboat. Think about what he said in this paragraph here about um, what a tugboat does with big ships. Um, and then think about um, what he says at the top of this paragraph about it not being the size of a person that gets the job done. Um, so why do you think he compares him to a tugboat? Why do you think he calls Tucker a tugboat? Um, that's what you can talk about here. So go ahead and pause this and do so now. 